It's back to basics with this Knit Cup Cozy today on Good Knit Kisses. Welcome to Good Knit Kisses. We're all about helping you stitch your love and love your stitches. Nothing wrong with going back to the basics from time to time. This basic cup cozy is a one piece cozy that slides on with ease. It's a tapered design, meaning it has no buttons to fiddle with while you're trying not to spill your drink. You can have your coffee, tea, or hot chocolate and keep your hand nice and cool. But basic and plain are not the same thing. Being simple has its advantages because you can have a nice big bold color or you can use stripes on this nice stock and knit flat stitch here. It keeps it nice on your hand, not too many bumps on it. Or you can spice it up with a duplicate stitch and embroidery skills. Put a monogram on here or a nice, cool, fun design. We've got some designs down below. So if you'll click on that link, you can go to the resource page for some charts to inspire you. We're going to go through all the materials you need to keep it in this gauge, but gauge is important to the pattern because it's going to be a tapered cup. That means it is wider at the top than it is at the bottom. If you substitute a different yarn, you're gonna to need to check your gauge and adjust accordingly, but we have an interactive calculator, yay! So go click down there, it'll help you do the math. It's approximately four inches tall. You can make it shorter, but we've made it four inches so that you have more room here to stitch on a cool, funky design. And if you've got big hands like me, let's get into tools. You're going to need a small gauge loom with at least 40 pegs. This is a 56 peg baby knit loom from Knitting Board's new baby knit loom set. And we've got uh, 56 pegs again on this one. It's three eighths gauge or small gauge loom. You can see uh, it stamped on the back of here and it has 56. We're only going to need actually 38 unless your gauge is too tight and then you'll need some more pegs. So this one will accommodate that nicely. You're also going to need a measuring tape just to make sure that you've got, um, got it at the right lengths. You'll need some scrap yarn to be able to take it off of the loom. You might want to block it in between because it's going to be very stretched out uh, when you go to measure that. So you may have to block it and then measure it uh, accurately. You also want a tapestry needle and then you'll want a stitch marker that can fit on your loom and some scissors. And then we need our yarn. We're working with a medium four weight yarn. This is a 100% wool from Red Heart called Chic Sheep. There's 24 different colors, so you can go from super basic uh, colors to really bold and do some fun stripes or use those for your duplicate stitch. So let's grab that pattern. Click on the link in the description below to get yours. And we will take you through all the steps you need from beginning to end. And if you need more help, please click on the link below for more stitches at a slower pace. All right, we're gonna begin with the long tail cast on, whichever method you prefer. You just need to end up with your peg one on this side to begin row one going back in this direction. I've pulled out three times the length needed for my cast on pegs, which for this gauge is 35. So you can count out 35 stitches and measure along that amount and then triple that number. Mine's about an arm's length work and maybe a little bit more. Start with a slip knot, however you prefer. I'll go through the first few stitches on the long tail. So just gonna put that slip knot right on. Make sure my ball yarn is in the back and my tail is towards me so I can keep track of which is which. All the tail yarn is gonna be E-wrapped. All the ball yarn is a unit wrap in the back. So we're going to begin by unit wrapping that first stitch and knit over, and then we're gonna E-wrap the second one, and then U-wrap with the yarn in the back, and knit over, okay, E-wrap, U-wrap, and knit over. Okay, so one more time, this is my tail yarn, go E-wrap around, it makes the E, and then we're going to U knit wrap around because so, it makes a, a U shape like that, okay? And then we just lift up and over, and it's real loose, and then you can just pull on it, and you're ready for the next stitch. So cast on 35 stitches, pause your video, and we'll be right back. 
Okay, we've cast it on and we're ready to begin. Do not use your stitch marker just yet. This is going to be used in a moment for indicating increases, but also you need to keep track of your rows with the row counter or tally marks off to the side. That's very important because your work is gonna get really stretched out and you won't be able to tell. This one right here, there's the right side, it was really stretched out coming off of the loom and then it actually ends up turning out like this. So you'll wanna have that extra yarn off to the side so that you can take it off the loom and be able to stretch it out. I did a little light steam blocking. This is the true height, so do not go by whatever you measure back here. All right, let's begin with a rib section. We're doing a one by one and we're doing three rows of it. So ignore your little tail that you have out here. If you need to cut it a little shorter, that's fine too. We're going to U-wrap knit, go around that peg and lift up and over and then purl the next stitch. Pull up that loop from the bottom, take the old loop off, put the new loop on, and then pull on it. And then we want to knit the next stitch, and then purl the next stitch. So if you are tempted to use the E-wrap, don't. It's going to be too stretchy. And uh, you can use a flat knit on this ribbing here, but I do not recommend it if you are a tight knitter. I do recommend the unit stitch or the true knit stitch. Uh, if you can do the true knit stitch throughout this project, it's going to be best. I'm gonna show you on the main stocking net portion, like right here. This part right here, you're going to need to use the true knit stitch or the U wrap knit, but you're gonna to need to do it loosely and I've got a trick for you. So continue working this one by one ribbing, knit one, purl one, all the way down. You're gonna do three rows. So we're gonna work one row, row two and row three. Pause your video and I'll meet you back over here after you've done three rows of ribbing. See you soon. All right, we're ready for row four and we're going to U wrap knit this stitch just as we normally do. But I'm gonna give you a trick to keep it nice and loose, especially if you're a tight loom knitter. So you're gonna hold the yarn back here with your tool and then wrap the next peg, okay? And that's actually going to give you a little bit extra yarn and you can hold it in the back with your finger. It doesn't work quite as well in the second stitch, but once you get going off that, that end one, just hold it here. I'm going to wrap around on the third one. Now I can really hold this extra yarn back here, knit up and over and then hold my tool in the back here and then wrap the next one and then hold it in the back with this other finger and lift up and over. And so what it does is it keeps that extra amount of yarn between these two pegs longer instead of shorter. Shorter by this, if I normally would do this, normally when I knit my U-Rev knit, I move it over here and I do this and it makes this a short distance. See how there's not as much yarn here? And I don't want this really flat. I want a nice, a nice consistent V. I don't want them really shortened, okay? I want this to look really nice because it, it's going to look good for stitching on top of for that duplicate stitch, which is also why I'm not using the E-Wrap stitch, which makes it kind of a Y shape instead of a V. All right, so you're gonna continue working across row four and then come back the same way, row five and row six. I'll meet you on the other side and show you that first increase. You're gonna to wanna to try this increase because it's great, it's easy and fast. So we'll see you soon after you've completed row six. Pause your video. All right, we're on row seven. This is an increase row. So all increase rows will do the same thing here. Before we do that, we're going to start by placing our stitch marker. This is only placed one time. So we're gonna lift up the last peg that we worked, place that there, and put it right back down. Okay, so we'll begin our increase row. We're going to wrap the stitch and knit it, and then we're going to pick it up and move it over one. Okay, we're preparing for our increase. So now we're going to take this purl stitch in the back. So this is the knit in the front and then the purl bump is in the back. We're just gonna take that previous knit stitch, this is the mother stitch, and move it and place it on top of the empty peg. Now you're just going to wrap that stitch, knit it, and move on. So you're just gonna continue working this knit row. Actually, oh, I need to make sure I have enough yarn. Actually, that, that uh, increase stitch is fine to wrap it a little bit tighter. All right, and now we're going to work our way the other direction. 
So you're going to complete your seventh row knitting, and then you're going to repeat rows four through seven. So those four rows with three regular knit rows and then an increase row two more times. So what you'll notice is after you've done an increase, you've got one more peg over here. So you'll know that by the time you have three extra pegs outside of the stitch marker, you're complete. Then you're going to ro work rows 16 through 25 knitting. The way that you keep up with that is just keep track. After you complete a row, just click it off. Complete a row, click it off. Okay? So if you um, if you complete an increase a little too soon, that's fine. Just know that if you get up to three increases and um, you uh, haven't quite got to your 25th row, then um, then don't keep increasing. You're done. Okay? So don't panic if you've got them a little bit out of place. Mine are evenly uh, increased along this edge, but um, it's fine if you get a little bit out of whack. So get it to 25 rows, and then I'll pause your video, and I'll meet you back up for the remainder of the pattern. See you soon. So you've completed row 25, and I'm showing it already off the loom, of course. You've got an extra set of scrap yarn that you may have set aside, go ahead and take your tapestry needle and just um, put that through all the loops and take it off. I recommend going ahead and um, you can wash this or you can just wet it a little bit, uh, squeeze it out, uh, just let it get a little bit damp and then pin it out to dry. And I've got a video on wet blocking uh, or you can do a light steam blocking on this one. Uh, just get, don't get too aggressive. What you want to do is take your stitches and elongate and pull them out because it will be uh, overly stretched. And once it gets looking like this and it's dry, then you can put it right back on the loom. All right. And so you can go ahead and measure that and make sure that you have the right length. And I've got all that information, of course, in the pattern, but it's about three and a half inches or nine centimeters. So you're going to place that on any peg here. And it doesn't matter which one, and just pull that out once you've got it on. I like to kind of give myself a little bit of room and then pull on that like that. Okay. Give myself something to pull it with. See that? And I can just place that stitch right back on more easily. All right. So place them all back on, and then you're going to complete another set of one by one ribbing. It's just knit one, purl one across, ending with a knit stitch at the end and making that for three rows. And then we will bind off in pattern together. So pause your video and I will meet you back up when you are ready to bind off. See you soon. All right, so we're on our last row. We are ready for the bind off or cast off. We're going to bind off in pattern, which means we're going to knit the knits and purl the purls. Just do just as we would in the ribbing. So we're going to knit the first stitch and purl the next stitch. All right. And then you're going to lift up the second stitch and put it on the first stitch and then knit that off. Okay, you bound off one, move the first peg and move it on to the second peg. So this was a knit before, and you can tell that by looking in the back and you can see this purl bump in the back and then a knit uh, back here. So it's the opposite in the front. So this was knit. So we're gonna work this stitch and knit it and then move it to the one peg and knit off and then move it over and then purl this next stitch, okay? Now, if you saw in a recent video, I showed a quick way to um, bind off and purl with and remembering everything without having to um, do this individually. You wanna make sure and stay loose on it. So here is the hack for binding off. So I know that my next stitch is, uh, I'm gonna have to, um, let's see, this was a purl back here, so I need to um, knit it up front. So this is a knit. So let's go ahead and knit this stitch here. Okay, keep it nice and loose. You've got to remain loose when you're doing it this way. Now we're going to work a purl stitch for the next one. Keep it nice and loose. A knit stitch for the next one. Okay. A purl stitch for the next one. And you just work the entire way across and then 
come back and just take the second loop over the first loop, knit it off, move it over, second loop over the first loop, knit it off, and move it over, second loop over the first loop, knit it off, and move it over because you've already put the work into it, okay? You just got to make sure and keep those stitches loose. Otherwise, it will be way too tight of a bind off. This one remains nice and stretchy, okay? All right, so continue working that. And when you get to your last stitch and knit it off, you're going to pull through a nice long tail, um, just, uh, you know, 12 to 18 inches or so, and uh, cut that off and pull it all the way through. And when we'll meet back up, I'll show you how to sew it up together. And um, we will wrap this project up. See you soon. All right, you come to the end, you got your last stitch and go ahead and cut off uh, the length to sew this up about three times this length, three or four times, and pull out this last stitch. So this is a perfect opportunity for you to go ahead and put on your duplicate stitch. You wanna have this nice and steamed even. This one's just a little bit rolling on me. I had actually uh, lightly steam blocked it when I got to this point here. So you're only seeing this part roll on mine. If yours is more rolly, go ahead and block it. Uh, you can pin it out like this, or you can uh, do a little bit of a steam block. Just be aware of what materials that you have. So click on that link down below. We've got a resource page for doing the duplicate stitch with the video on how to do it and a few charts for you. You're just going to work in all of these stitches. It's just basically putting another color on top and creating a design. So you've got your basic one and we, now we want to move on to sewing it together. Try and put on your duplicate stitch first before you sew it, but you can do it either way. All right, uh, pause your video, uh, go ahead and get your uh, needle ready and we will sew this together. See you soon. Go ahead and thread your needle. And got my yarn coming out this side and we're gonna go from the top down. So we're gonna go over to this side where we've got this nice uh, knit edge going along here. And we're gonna work into this bottom stitch. Go right through the stitch here to connect. Pull on through. And then we're going to work into these two stitches here to complete that chain edge. All right, I'm gonna come back up through here and you've got that nice edge that's finished out and then we'll start working back and forth across here to connect. All right, now that we're connected, we're actually going to go through the pearl bumps uh, between this column here and this selvage edge. So we're gonna go between the pearl bumps to the pearl bumps on the opposite side and just picking those up. And that will actually uh, snug this all up together and uh, remove this edge here. And we'll have a little bit of a uh, little bitty seam in the back, but that won't matter. Uh, so we're gonna pick up this first pearl bump here this is, I find, is the easiest way um, because you can see how to get it started. So we're gonna jump across to the other side and pick up the first pearl bump over on this side. And then go back across, pick up the next pearl bump, and across, pick up the next one, and you know that you did three rows, so I'm picking up, you can actually count back down and say, okay, this was the third row, this is the second row, this is the third row, and that way you kind of know you're on, on point here. So I'm picking up the third row on this side here, and then the third row on this side. Okay, and so that, that pulls that together, and now it continues that ribbing look. And you're gonna go back over to this side and go up now, this side right here is the one that was all the increases, and this one is, is the straight one. It's going to be easier to see this side here, but uh, this one over here, um, you're picking up on some of them where there was an increase, so it might be a little bit harder to see. But on this side, it's going to be consistently um, lining up with where this, um, this column is where we had the pearls, so you can see that we, we're going to go to the next stitch up 
uh, which is going to be right here in between this column here. Okay, this little bar. And pick those stitches up and then come over to the next side. And we're going to go in one. Let's see, where were we the last time? Okay, so we were here, and then we want to go up one stitch. And then go over to this side over here. And go up one. You're just going right through that bar. And then go over to the other side. And go right through there. I'll do one more and I'll show you how it's kind of working up here. So. One bar. And over to the right again. And if you follow along this very edge here, you should be able to see it. But if you can see that I have been uh, stitching this together and it's bringing the sides of these edges uh, up nicely. Okay, so you're just going to continue going back and forth and um, get to the very end and uh, we'll meet you there uh, for some final stitching. All right, so just take your time and if you uh, don't pull too tightly, if you need to, you can kind of pull back and see where you came from and loosen the stitches and undo it if you need to, if you've never practiced this before. All right, pause your video and I will see you down at the end. See you soon. Okay, and so when you get down to the end here where you've got the ribbing, you just want to make sure that you're lined up and ready to go. If you need to work two stitches together to get yourself lined up, uh, you can do that. You can grab two bars from the same line uh, to uh, ease that uh, tension and um, uh, ease the fullness, actually, is what that's called. And uh, that way one side doesn't look all bunched up and the other one uh, isn't. Okay, so I'm going to go over, let's see, I'm going on this side. I'm going to go over here and pick up my purl bump. Oops. And go over to pick up this first purl bump. And continue as I've been doing. And then you will want to um, finish off by... Uh, Connecting as we did before in the beginning, you'll connect. You're going to connect and uh, finish off that uh, look to the chain there. Let's see, my eyeballs deceiving me here. All right, I think I've got the last one, so I'm going to go through. Oh, this is where you kind of have to eyeball it here. In my bifocal eyes. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go through uh, this end here to the back and then I'm going to go around to the front and I want to pull in the stitch that would line up here. So I'm going to go through here. Okay, so I'm creating the back end of this chain and I want to do the front end of this chain to go around to the front of this column because we're on this column here. So we're going to go all the way to this chain. Okay, and that's going to pull those extra stitches to the back because you do have a seam in the back. All right, and so that makes that nice and uh, imitates exactly what you have along the edge here. And then you can just turn it inside out and continue uh, stitching that in. And then you've got your tail. And this is the original tail. And you can just kind of go back through here and weave in your tails. All right, so continue weaving in your tails and I'll pause your video, I'll meet you back at the end. See you soon. And there you have your basic knit cup cozy. 
and it is tapered where it's smaller at the bottom, bigger at the top, and you can design any duplicate stitch pattern on the top here. Use just the width of it or feel free and go all the way around to the side. For ideas, go click on that link down below and hit the subscribe button with a bell notification for your next video. We have videos every week here. Thank you so much to Red Heart Yarns for the yarn and be sure and click on the comments down below. Tell me what you thought. Uh, which designs would you like to see in a duplicate stitch to match your cup cozy? Thanks for joining us today where we help you stitch your love and love your stitches. See you again soon.